Captain, hand me my map case, please. Yes, sir. Chinese. Well, who is it? He didn't say. You're the sergeant of the guard. Ask him. Well, I can't until he gives a countersign. You're supposed to challenge him first, you old goat. I would, but I can't remember the password. Open up! Who goes there? Open up in the name of Patrick Henry. I ought to take a saber to you, boy. Sorry, sir. I take it there's an in here. It's a tavern, sir. Cincinnatus runs it. We've come a long ways, and the governor is weary. You will direct a Mr. Daniel Boone to present himself to Governor Patrick Henry for military instructions. We're going to war, sir? You're about to be bloodied in battle, boy. Bloodied in battle? When we'd hear you don't give us napkins, Cincinnati. Well, he's gentry. You'd most likely blow your nose in it. Yeah. Ah, how'd you like the victuals, Governor? Delicious. Uh, what is it, partridge? Raccoon. <laughs> Governor Henry. Daniel. You've traveled quite a piece. We're mighty proud to have you in Boonesboro. Well, you may regret it when you learn the purpose of my journey. I'm here to recruit every able-bodied man in Boonesboro into the Virginia militia. Well, you do us honor, Governor, but I'm afraid that's impossible. You question my authority? No, sir, but it's still impossible. Half the men are at bone lick, process, and salt. Leaving you how many men? 27. Well. Beggars can't be choosers. I'll take what I can get. Now, you'd be leaving this fort defenseless. Against what? The Indians. Been raided lately? No, sir, but we've always had enough men in the fort to discourage the Shawnee from thinking about it. Once we left... Oh, you frontiersmen are always magnifying the dangers from the Redskin. Why, for every scalp taken, must be a hundred stories. If you're really worried about your women and children, send them back to civilization. This is our civilization, Governor. This outpost on the edge of the wilderness. This outpost on the edge of the wilderness is our home. May I remind you, Daniel, that Kentucky is still a county of Virginia. I am empowered to levy troops, and you, as a captain in the Virginia militia, are going to lead them. Innkeeper. Yes, sir. Show me to my room. Right over here, sir. Assemble your men and report to me for military instruction. 
British uniform? Who, uh, who is this besotted lout? A deserter, sir. Uh, right this way. Well, at least that explains his being drunk. Here you are, Governor. Well, I ain't joining no Virginia militia. No, me not either. Now, wait a minute. Let's not go tamping our powder down. Well, can he make us go, Daniel? That he can. Remember, we're still at war with the Crown. If we leave the fort, there'll be a massacre. That's right. Well, we still don't know what he wants, and there's no use worrying about it until I find out. I'm making you good. Come in. Captain Boone, some of the remarks I overheard border on sedition. Well, their independence shouldn't be mistaken for disloyalty, Governor. So we're fighting a war for independence. There have to be some sacrifices made. We'll make them, just as soon as we know what you want of us. I want you to lead an expedition through Illinois. This is Fort Cumberland, strategically located on the Chillicothe River and consequently coveted by the British. We know that a battalion of dragoons is en route from Detroit to seize it. And my mission would be to relieve Fort Cumberland. Or recapture it if the British have taken it. With a company of men. <laughs> if that's all we can muster. Wouldn't it be easier to try to ambush the British before they get to Fort Cumberland? Oh, Boonesboro's 165 miles from it. The British can be there from Detroit in four days. We can be in Stover Station in three. It's closer. Stover Station? Well, correct me if I'm mistaken, but the only way the British can get to Fort Cumberland is by crossing the river here. At Stover Station? What if they were to get there to find that footbridge was gone? Uh, you have a head for strategy, Daniel, but your plan blows up if they beat us to the bridge. Well, we just have to make sure we got there first, wouldn't we, Governor? It'd be quite a feat, sir, if you pulled it off. It would be a coup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> By thunder, Alexander Hamilton would give Virginia the respect she's due. I reckon he would, sir. Well, your plan has the advantage of speed and surprise, but hoping to reach Stover Station with a company of men? Well, you're quite right, sir. Twenty-seven men traipsing through the woods wouldn't stand a chance. But five of us could make it, and in time. Five? And two horses to tote the powder kegs. Agreed. Choose your men and be ready to pull out at midnight. Yes, sir. Captain, I'm not completely unaware of your motive in all this. Sir? Hoping to keep your best men safe here in Boonesboro. But I happen to think your plan has merit. My plan, sir? It was my recollection that you thought of it. I did. Well, what'd you tell him, Daniel? Well, he told me, Cincinnati, like he has the right to tell all of us. You mean we're going to have to leave the women and the young'uns behind? Well, five of us will. I'm calling for volunteers. You know you can count on me, Daniel. Well, Cincinnati, it's a long trip up to Chillicothe to Stover Station in Illinois. Over 100 miles we'll have to trek in three days. And I'm not sure you could keep up, but I'm beholden to you anyway. Crikey, I can keep up with the best of you. <laughs> How do you think I made it all the way to Cane Tuck? And over the Cumberland Gap in my pep shot pouch? Well, now, you stay put, Cincinnati. Take me, Daniel. I saw one of the king's men lay a saber to my paw once because he was a bondsman. I got a stake in going. Then you'll go along, Jericho. And you can count on me, too, Daniel. No, I couldn't, Tupper. Not since you married the widow and have the six children. You'd be thinking of them every step of the way, and I couldn't blame you. Well, there's hardly a man among us who ain't hitched. Well, that's true, apart from a few pagan exceptions. Well, it's not your war, Mingo. Any war where freedom is at stake is every man's war. Besides, should it matter to Patrick Henry, who helps him to achieve glory? Glad to have you along. We'll need supplies, two pack horses, and enough powder to blow an English footbridge to kingdom come. Daniel? You look worried. What's the matter? Does it show that much? <laughs> Does an aspen leaf show its whiteness before a storm? Maybe I don't fancy leaving Boonesboro at a time like this. Oh, no, it's not Boonesboro. It'll be safe enough with the men that stay behind. And it's not Rebecca. She's seen you come and go many times. You know the Illinois country? We just got three days to get to Stover Station. Does that mean anything to you? It means we'd better take the short route through Tuscarora country. Otherwise, it'd take more than a week. That's about it. Does the governor know this? And I sold him on the plan to ambush the British. 
But if he knew what we were up against, he'd conscript every man in Boonesboro, and this fort would be left deserted. What can you do about it? Huh? I say, what can you do about it? Get somebody to guarantee safe passage. Who might that someone be? Cara Hecaso. What are you going to do? Ask the Tuscarora to lend him to you? No. I'm going to try to reason with him. With him? Well, that man's heart is twisted with hatred and distrust. Sometimes when a man's been disgraced, his greatest ambition is to restore his honor. And if he doesn't listen to your reason? Well, I did him a favor once. I can only hope he's willing to return it. When do we leave? You better stay here. If I'm not back by midnight, tell the governor. It's wrong. What's wrong about it? You forgot to carry the eight. How am I supposed to think of all those things when the redcoats are about to storm the fort? Now, where did you hear that? It's supposed to be a secret, but everybody's talking about it. Honest, Mom, I really wish you wouldn't let him carry on like this. You don't believe me, do you? Well, you just wait till Pa gets home. He'll tell you. Oh, stop your bickering, you two. Help me set the table, Mama. Israel, clear those books up. I have supper as soon as your Pa gets here. Supposing what Israel says is true. What do you mean, supposing? It is true. Oh, hush. Do you think they'll take Jericho? You're fond of him, aren't you, darling? Well, I just used him as an example. Seems like only yesterday you were picking berries and climbing trees. Now you're worried about him going off to war. We don't climb trees anymore, Mama. Do you think of him often, Mama? Well, it's funny. When we're together, he's kind and gentle. Just before I go to sleep, I think of something he said. It isn't funny at all. It was when he said it. Oh, I don't know. It's all mixed up. I know, Mom. Why is that? You're growing up, darling. If they do take him, I think I'll die. No, you won't. You'll just remember till he comes back. Tell you it's supper. Now you go wash up, young man. Jericho, you'll be staying for supper. Thank you, ma'am. I brought Jericho along to help you move. Move? Well, I'll just uh, feel safer with you and the children back at the fort. Is something wrong? No, but uh, I'll be gone for a spell. How long? Oh, well, just a few days. Well, you still have to have some supper. Well, uh, I haven't got time to eat, but you could fix me something to eat along the way. I guess we may as well get started. Mama, start collecting our things. I keep telling you, Jericho, but you wouldn't believe me. How long will it be before the Redcoats get here? Uh, we're not going to wait for them to come here, Israel. We're going after them. The whole fort? No, a special party of scouts. Oh. Israel, why don't you go collect your books? Go on. Does that mean they'll be leaving you behind? Maybe yes, and then again, maybe no. Well, um, I'd feel a whole lot safer if they did leave you behind to protect us. You would? Mm-hmm. A whole lot safer. And how would you feel if I had to go? Well, um, I'd be scared. How scared? Well, I don't think I'd get a wink of sleep worrying about you. You wouldn't? No, not a wink. Oh. Take care of me, Jericho. I will, sir. Becky. Take care, Dan.
from home, Boone. Not so far, Chief of the Tuscarora. You know my name. Use it. Which one? You've become a legend among two nations. These are my people. I have but one name, Katahikasa. Your tongue still stumbles over it. The Tuscaroras accept me. You wear your shame proudly. Is this what you came to tell me? No, Major Clark. I came to ask you to escort me through Tuscarora territory. I should do this? Why? Because I have to be in Illinois in a place called Stover Station in three days. And the only way I can make it in time is with your help. So you're on an urgent mission? I am. The British plan on taking Fort Cumberland within the week. If they succeed, the war will go another winter or perhaps end. And I don't intend to let that happen, but I do need your help. You're a fool, Boone. You risk your life to come to me pleading like a squaw. I'm not pleading with you. What would you call it? I did you a favor once. Or have you forgotten that, among other things? I have not forgotten. At my court-martial, you were the only one to testify in my behalf. Or perhaps the Tuscarora don't believe in living up to obligations. You're challenging my honor as a white man or an Indian. Either way you'd like it. All I came for was to get an answer from you. I have no interest in your war. You know that. Then you're the fool, not me. Right now you're free. How long do you think that'll last if the British take this territory? All right, Boone. I owe you a favor. I will make a bargain with you. I will lead you through the country of my people, but no further. Is that agreed? Agreed. White man's custom. Tuscarora needs no handshake. Quintius Cincinnati, savior of Rome. Huh? Hast thou come to deliver me with a tot of rum? You've already slopped up enough to fill a dry gulch. One wee drop, Cincinnati. A tribute to independence, eh, lad? You're just about as independent as I can stand, Matthew Elbridge. For my life's sake, Cincinnati. For my life's sake. Oh, all right. One swallow of ale, and that's all. Bless you, Consul, bless you. He saw, but blasted with excessive light, he closed his eyes in endless night. <laughs> Were the creator divided the firmament, he might have used more discretion in his shadings. Huh? <laughs> what time is it, Tench? Past four. Not the hour, boy, not the hour, the day, the day. Monday, then. Ah. Oh. I've slept through another Sabbath, and possibly the platitudinous droolings of the vicar. Ah. 
What was the text of his sermon, huh? Jeremiah 29, 5. <laughs> there you go. Build ye houses that ye may dwell in them, plant ye gardens that ye may eat the fruit of them. Build houses and plant gardens, eh, Mr. Elbridge? We're not that lucky. Aye. But we will be once we've shown the crown the business end of our muskets, eh? <laughs> you talk with an easy conscience for one who still wears the king's colors. Chopper. My sergeant major might have called it desertion, Mr. Tupper. I choose to think that I have made a covenant with freedom. Was it freedom you were after or sanctuary? If Tomahawk could split him, we'd all be drowned in rum. Enough. He's a friend of Daniel, so that makes him one of us. One of us? He hasn't drawn a sober breath since we set eyes on him. I'd rest easier if they'd kept him on their side. It's past midnight and we're still waiting for Mr. Boone. This has all the earmarks of treason. Yes, sir. Sir, I assure you, if it's in his power, he'll be here. Who are you? Uh, Mingo's a friend of Daniel's and of the settlement. Even help us if our cause depends on such improvised alliances. You're late. This is our guide to Stover Station, Governor. Another savage. Well, this so-called savage is Major George Rogers Clark. Major Clark. I prefer the name Kata Hikasa. Oh, yes. Yes, you would. I recall the proceedings now. It was treason, wasn't it? And you're depending on him. He left the Tuscarora settlement to escort us. Where to? To a British ambush? Through hostile territory. Without him, we couldn't make it. And you wouldn't have a mission, Governor. And if it fails, I will charge you with putting the safety of your own settlement above that of your country, Mr. Boone. You got a trusting friend, Mr. Boone. The pack horses are ready, Daniel. Mr. Boone! Take me with you, sir. Where we're going, Mr. Elbridge? I don't care. Perhaps you ought to care. You can use another musket, can't you? I can use another musket, providing it's there to use when we get to Stover Station. It's going to be a long trek through the woods on foot, without a drop of spirits. I was a soldier once. Is it liberty you're after? I want to feel free of that fear in my belly. Every time I hear a cannonball. I'm a coward and a deserter, Mr. Boone. I'm no good to anyone here, even to myself. Give me a chance to resurrect my soul. Come along, Mr. Elbridge. Thank you, sir. Why are we stopping? For want of a boat. Well, we'll just ford it. The river swallowed. What's the matter, Major? Can the Tuscarora teach you how to swim? Now, if it were rum, I could drink my way across. Daniel, help! Oh, the horse is getting away. We're losing the 
surprise! <laughs> We're losing the powder! Supplies. We still got enough powder to blow up that bridge. Several days to travel without food. These woods are full of game. We can hunt our food. And have every Indian in the territory know you're here? It was my understanding that you had promised us safe passage. Have you betrayed us, too? I promised you safety through the country of the Tuscarora, no further. How far is that, Major? Not very far, Mr. Elbridge. Well, Daniel, it's your decision. When I set out to blow a bridge, I aim to blow it. Let's build a fire. No fire. But your men are freezing. They still keep their scalps. Let them build a fire, Boone. Let them enjoy it. It's the last one you'll have. An officer's first concern is for the welfare of his men. I thought you'd thrown that handbook of command away, Major. Mr. Elbridge, you look like a man who needs a drink. I swore off. At least all this is over. Besides, where would a man get a drink out here? But why did you do it? You were on the winning side. Join Boone. I had a dream once of starting fresh. A new continent, a new nation. Free of oppression and free of want. But that dream got lost in my fermented brain, my friend. Do you ever consider what might happen to you if you were caught? Some ignominious end reserved for traitors. <laughs> but I intend to cheat the king of a hanging. You're a fool, Mr. Elbridge. A fool? Yes but I may yet die a man. Ah! 
sorry, Daniel. I was hoping I could be of service. You were, Mr. Albert. You saved my life. And could you do one thing for me? When you get back, could you say that at Boonesboro last, uh, a free citizen? One of his best, Matthew. Thank you, Daniel. devil. <laughs> Dan, that arrow. You're just gonna have to yank it out. Don't play around with it, boy. Show him, Major. You gotta pull it out. <sighs> it's gonna hurt, Dan. He got away. He can alert every British garrison from here to Stover Station. And we can still stop him. We haven't got the time. Let's move. You're worth a lot of money to those Indians. Ten pounds a scalp, and they know you're here. If we try to flush out every Indian we run across, we'll never make that bridge. You think you're going to make it with this leg? That's my worry, Major. What are you trying to do, Boone? Put a feather in Patrick Henry's cap or your own? What about Elbridge? We're going to bury him, aren't we? We can't afford another casualty. As a soldier, he's entitled to military honors. What is this war, my boy? What is war to you? Ceremony with drums and a bugler? I don't know. I've never been in one before. Well, you're going to know before you reach Stover Station. Boone will get you all killed if you insist on going on with this. Elbridge is dead. If you want to quit on him, it's up to you. I'm going on. Don't look at me. Look at this. It's Iroquois, not Tuscarora. Right. I agreed to see you safely through Tuscarora territory. Well, you're through it now. I've paid my debt to you. I owe you nothing. That was our agreement. Well, good luck to you. So you're walking out on us. Major Clark is very good at walking out on things. That's right. I'm a traitor, Mingo. What makes you think I wouldn't lead you into an Iroquois ambush if I stayed? Nobody ever proved those charges against you. You neglected to read the court-martial proceedings, Boone. If you'd have stayed around to try to defend yourself. Why? For what reason? To answer lies and false accusations? I never lost my faith in you, Major. Major? Ha! <laughs> I give up that uniform some time ago. The ways of the Tuscarora are my ways now. I have no further obligations to you, Boone. From now on, to betray you would be a duty, not a shame. That uniform may be harder to take off than you think. Let's move. Didn't you hear me? That's an order. Well, at least you could stop and let me change that bandage. I'll let you know when I need to change the bandage. Now get up there where you belong. Look, I don't want to argue with a crippled man, but that bandage has got to be... You want to be a soldier, don't you, boy? The first thing you learn is to obey an order. He's right about that leg, though, Boone. You got to stop the bleeding. What are you doing here? What difference does it make? 
a lot of difference. After the way you talked yesterday, I don't think I trust you very much. You got plenty of reasons not to trust me, boy. I've had plenty of time to make arrangements for that ambush. Then you better be going back where you came from. Put the gun down, Jericho. Are you going to take his word for anything? He hadn't said anything yet. Now, going up ahead. No, I don't care to turn my back on him. Don't you hear an order, soldier? Move! Get out of here! I'll take care of Boone. Why'd you come back, Major? I don't know. Yet. How long you plan on staying? I don't know that either. Come on. Let's get that light fixed. Rest here. Face too fast for him? No, for me. The Iroquois have a settlement a few miles up from here. He's burning up with fever. We ought to get him there. And get him killed? You already said his scalp was worth a lot of money. I can handle that. The Iroquois still have respect for me. Could be they'd consider you a traitor, too. In that case, I'd lose my scalp along with yours. What do you say, Mingo? I say no. Daniel is still in charge here. If he says to move ahead, we'll move. You want him to die? If any of us die, it'll be at Stover Station. Where do you think we are, Captain? Your core territory. It's not what I meant. Somewhere near Stover Station. But you can't be too sure of that. You've had to let me lead the way. A man half delirious with fever can't always be sure of his direction. So you still have to trust a traitor, don't you? Why? Why do you want me to quit, Major? Why would you want to see a man give up? Look at him. His leg's fallen off. Two days without food, and he's still coming. He won't give up, Major. You may as well stop hoping. He's only a man. He's not a god. Then treat him as a man who has faith in your honor. Honor it was taken from me long ago. By yourself? Or perhaps you're afraid you never had it to begin with.
only a man, Mingo. Why'd you come back, Jericho? We're not gonna leave you like this. You'll do as I say, boy. The bridge ain't worth it, Daniel! It's not! It's more in the bridge. Look out there. Tell me what you see. Tell me. Cane and clover and grass. A sign of good soil. A farmer couldn't ask for better. That's what you aim to be, ain't it, boy? Yeah. The bridge. Oh. Let's get him on a horse. No. You've been relieved of your command. You're going without me. Boone, your legs crawling with death. You're still playing soldier. Well, maybe we don't mean to take orders anymore. He's still in command here, Major. And you're still gonna lead us to that bridge. How you gonna tote the powder kegs? On your backs? I don't understand. Maybe that's your trouble, Major. Maybe it's always been your trouble. You don't understand. get to that bridge in time to blow it up. What are your orders, Major? What made you so sure I'd get you here? I figured you never could take off that uniform. How much time do you need? Give me 10 minutes. Here they come.
criminal charges have been dropped. Thanks to Patrick Henry and to you, Daniel. Can't you stay a while longer, Major? I'm sorry I can't, Rebecca. I'm being given my own command. I must report to General Washington for further orders. There'll be another time. Of course there will. Tell me again, Jericho. Oh, Israel, you must have heard it at least a hundred times. Well, then, just a the part about the bridge. Well, it sort of looked as if our cause was hopeless there. When you stepped into the breach. Uh, it wasn't exactly like that. Don't be modest, Jericho. You were an inspiration to all of us, wasn't he, Daniel? That he was. Tuscarora will miss you. And I'll miss them. I'm sure you will. They taught me how to endure, as you did, Daniel. What was that, Pa? Got to Hikasa. Like an eagle and as small as a mountain.